This book is a little overwhelming. And you know you're supposed to have a devotional life because that's the key to spiritual formation. And But you wake up each morning and you're overwhelmed by where you should start. And you might go through a drama in your own mind like I do, which is, well, I probably should start in the Torah because it's the first five books of the Bible. And the first parts are the most important. You know, the law of first principle or first mention. I should probably go there. But then I probably should go to the words in red because Jesus is the word of God. He's the incarnate word of God. I probably should know the words in red, but he quotes Deuteronomy and Leviticus more than any other thing. But you know what? Isaiah, he's kind of like the climax, the prophet of the beauty of the Lord, and he gives us more understanding in the first coming all the way up to the millennial reign and the second coming of Christ. There's no one with a breath like Isaiah that was right there before the Babylonian exile. But then again, I mean, how can we not start with the Pauline corpus? going on the Roman road, understanding his theology. But then again, James is the brother of Jesus, and he gives us that practical truth for how to live holy before him. But then again, we could be in the end times. I mean, this might be Revelation quotes the Old Testament or alludes to it more than any other book in the New Testament. We probably should know what's going to happen, perhaps in our generation, our children's or grandchildren's. And then in the midst of all that, we just go, ah! (laughs) <laughs> and then what do we do? We turn to a psalm. <laughs> why, why do we do that? Because it's the psalms are the place of worship where we can make the heart connect. And it's in that place that it's right. All the saints through all the ages have turned to the psalms to begin there. <laughs> 